Welcome to Celebrating Act Two with Manny Pacheco. My partner John and I get to speak with Manny often, and we love it. Hey, Manny, good to see you again. Good to see you guys again. When when we get together and talk about film and Hollywood history, um, often we talk about the controversy of somebody's favorite mm. actor or the best actress of all times or something like that. And I know you always have uh, a, a slightly interesting sideways look at the, you don't always pick the obvious uh, favorite actors. Mm -hmm. No, but I, I, I want to take you back to before World War II, the 30s and the 40s, that I call it early talkies. Or, you know, it, the films were different between the wars. Yeah. And, and there were a lot of people that were discovered and came in, young guys that later became really famous. Mm. But the films weren't all about those those guys that became famous. So who are your favorite leading men of the 30s and 40s? Well, I like to think that the that my list is a composite of other people's lists. That I, if you look at what everybody thinks, that I, I think that my list is very little d democratic that way. Uh, but I mean, I, I have a friend that will not get off. His name is Scott Ratner, so this is my tribute to Scott. Who will not get off of William Powell as the best of uh, the best of all, and I would definitely place William Powell in that top ten. I, I'm 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 with him on that, but I'm not sure that there's a lot of folks that that might. But count me on the uh, on the brigade for for William Powell. He was urbane. He he looked great in a tux, as did as did Astaire, which we'll get into in a second. Um, he really uh, was able to play earthy crime fighters, detectives, gumshoes, and he did yep. it in a comedic way. And it didn't hurt that many times his partner was Myrna Loy. So I think I think that there's one right there for you. So there, there we go. We're off and running. My favorite oh. actor has been, never been a secret who my favorite actor is. And that's Spencer Tracy. And his, his career started in the 30s. By the time the 1930s ended, he already had two Oscars on his mantle for Captain's Courageous and Boys Town. He was nominated for his work in 1935 in San Francisco. And by the time 1940 hits, he's also the biggest money maker, according to Cashbox. And so he was really, he had it all. And in fact, Clark Gable called him an actor's actor. So there's two right off the bat. Yeah, also, by the way, on Spencer Tracy, he he even went into the 50s. I mean, he was... Uh, oh, he went into the 60s, actually. 60s, yeah. right. Yeah. So, I mean, he had, he had four, like... Well, you will find that all of these names go right into the 50s. I mean, William Powell's last performance was in Mr. Roberts oh, in right. 1956 mm -hmm. or 55. So I, I just mentioned and alluded to Clark Gable. Well, he was the king of MGM. Yeah. I mean, they, they, did a, they did a poll among movie fans as who are the king and queen of MGM. Well, the queen was Myrna Loy and the king was Clark Gable. Sure. And Clark Gable, you know, most people think, well, he was just a movie star. He wasn't an actor. He was a very good actor. He liked to, like many of the stars, like Cary Grant or John Wayne, he liked to play himself a lot. Yeah. But he could act. The guy can act. And and he was a favorite, favorite leading man. for, And he was the, he truly was the king of MGM. Although the only time he won an Academy Award was for a production made at Columbia Studios. But, but that's another story. <laughs> but uh, but I mean, how do you how do you leave Clark Gable off when he ended the decade, the 1930s, with "Gone with the Wind"? <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, it, it just just doesn't get any better. And I I think that the loss of his wife Carol Lombard in, in in 1942 took a lot out of him. And I think that his movies might not have been as good after her death. He was a he was a very troubled man after she died, and that's really a shame. But his, but his movies up until that point were, were perfection. Now, if you look at the AFI list, so we've named three. If you look at the AFI list, who's at the top of the list almost every time they, they conduct a survey? Humphrey Bogart. Oh, yeah. Humph and that's saying a lot considering out of Warner Brothers, there were some great, great top 10 stars there. Humphrey Bogart emerges as the best and the finest, the complicated man who could transcend being a third banana or a second banana in crime films, gangster films, to becoming the leading iconic film noir actor. 
and and eventually ending up owning his own production company and always always a fan favorite and it doesn't hurt that when he you know he falls in love with this beautiful 21 year old model in yeah. Lauren McCall yeah I mean, good for a good for bogey <laughs> Were there, uh, Manny, uh, where I was going with this in the beginning was, were there any names from the 30s and 40s that were the top leading that maybe we don't remember? Well, I can think of one that I think never is on a list and should be. But I think the name is pretty familiar. But it, for some reason, he just gets left off a list considering he won two Academy Awards. And that's Frederick March. Oh, sure. March was such yeah. a great leading character actor. He wins his award, his first award for for playing Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Yep. But his his work on the best years of our lives is just magnificent. He was in just a number of period pieces through the 1930s. But I will argue that really his career took off in the 1950s with just a just a number of hits topped by Inherit the Wind with Spencer Tracy. But he also did, uh, I mean, he did that wonderful, that uh, Seven Days in May where he gets to play the president in the 1960s. I think Frederick March is one of those actors that should be on the list of top 10 of all time, but very but very often he's not. If you're talking about the more underrated leading men, you, you can't leave out Dana Andrews. Good. Right. That's, you know, yeah. that's the kind of name I was looking for. Yeah, Dana Andrews. If, that, if that's what you're it, looking it's for. The, it, yeah, it's the kind of name when you say it, I say, oh, of course. Yeah, but I, you know, I, you know one of the reasons is that I think of him as later, like Jimmy Stewart, you know, who were later leading men. They weren't yeah. in the, they, they, I, but, um, but you'd be surprised, you know, when their career started, Dana Andrews, Jimmy Stewart, and let's say William Holden all made movies in 1939. Mm. <laughs> it's not like they didn't do movies in the 30s. Right. So, I mean, yes, you're right. They are probably better known in the 50s. Uh, Dana Andrews was big in the 40s, though. Right. He had Laura, also the best years of our lives. He did the Oxbow Incident. He, ma he made a right. number of great films. And he, just like Bogey, he really did well in film noir. So, I mean, I think D Dana Andrews is about as underrated as it gets. But I think that there are Hollywood historians. I, I, Carl Rollison who is a, an author, a celebrated author and educator, who did a whole book on the life of Dana Andrews that's been celebrated. So maybe in 2023, he's not as underrated, but for a good long time, he was underrated. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I also wanna mention, you know, this name never comes up only because he worked most of his career at Paramount, and that's Gary Cooper. Mm -hmm. Gary Cooper was at the mm -hmm. very top of his game and he was a leading man. I mean, he never got to work with Bogey or Gable. I mean, and none of the big stars. He never worked with Cagney because he was over at Paramount. Right. <laughs> and I think that, you know, unfortunately, he, I mean, he did make great films with, you know, let's say Ray Moland or, or Robert Preston, but he didn't make the, the, the big film. I mean, he worked really well with Walter Brennan and he made a number of films with Walter Brennan. But boy, let me just tell you, Gary Cooper was at the top of the, uh, of his game as far as leading men go. Mm -hmm. And and you know who thought so? His leading ladies. They loved him. <laughs> and so I'm not, what, talking, I'm not question, talking about on screen. <laughs> quick question for you. Oh, who are going to be the names? Uh, did I hear Errol Flynn come up in this conversation? Or Errol Flynn belongs on that list. I mean, just like Cagney, he was the king of his life. So lot. I want to know who, el who else? who else is going to be... Uh, our audience is going to say, hey, what about? Are there any well, what about you might, think we missed? say, what about John Garfield? Oh, really? oh great yeah. name. Great actor. And, and was... he, he really didn't uh, last as long after the war. As because he died. Other. Well, number one. The, the, what are, the, how the, inconvenient of him. The, the, well, you know, the House on American Activities went right. after him. And then he dies of a heart attack at age 39. Mm. Wow. But but I mean, up until he made a uh, gentleman's agreement, he was on a trajectory that was just straight up. Wow. And he was a really wonderful. He, I think he invented the concept of method acting. He was doing method before Montgomery Clift or James Dean or, or Marlon Brando. I think arguably the pioneer of, of method acting was John Garfield. So I think that's how good he was. And I think his finest moment was the postman always rings twice. with yes. mm. Absolutely. Just yeah. A remarkable yeah. performance. And one other name, if you want, what about or what if, 
How about Franchot Tone? Oh, good name. Hmm. Yeah, Franchot Tone was a great actor in the 30s. I think he was more of a character actor in the 40s. But what a wonderful performance in Mutiny on the Bounty. And he made other films that were just a lot of fun. He liked to make those light comedies, that the kind of films that Fred McMurray or Robert Young would make. <laughs> you know what I mean? So Fr Franchot Tone is one of, those, one of those names that, you know, doesn't come up as often. Boy, what... What a wonderful presence on screen. And as a matter of fact, he was nominated for Best Actor for his work on Mutiny on the Bounty. So he was that he was that good an actor. Mm. And, and I, if you want to name one more, let's say one more character actor that was at the very top of his game, okay. considered a leading man, although he was not very attractive, was Wallace Beery. <laughs> well, that's, that's interesting, man. Manny, that's the kind of names I was hoping you'd bring out. <laughs> the names that are familiar, but don't come to the front of your mind. Gary Cooper, Clark Gable, you know, Spencer Tracy, those are all, they're so big, they're so obvious. But, but Wallace, Wallace Berry, Berry, was, Berry was big. I mean, he wasn't well-liked because he wasn't a friendly guy, but I mean, the movies he made, Grand Hotel, Dinner at Eight... He was with um, with Marie Dressler in those Men and Bill series. Mm. Sure. Uh, he played Viva Via, which, you know, if you're Latino, you don't like the performance. But he was <laughs> still, I mean, he still starred in the film. Yeah. And, he was, and, it, look, that was the year, era of yeah. hokey minority performances. Uh, ho ho hokey is a very charitable word. We'll, we'll go with hokey. Yeah. Okay. But anyway... <laughs> But anyway, but Wallace Berry, you can't argue, and, and, and in some cases, he was considered the highest paid actor for his time, mm. second to only wow. uh, Barbara Stanwyck at, at, at one point. So, I mean, he I, he did well for himself, and, and I mean, for somebody who didn't look like a leading man, he right. became a leading man, and he, and he starred in his films, you yeah. know. And, and I mean, there were those who, like, copied him, but never had the lasting power of Wallace Berry, and what comes to mind is Victor McLaughlin, he was kind of a leading man for a moment. Edward Arnold was a leading man for a moment, but mostly they were character actors. Wallace Berry stayed a star when he could have played character roles for the rest of his career and been very comfortable. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Great, great uh, trip back in memory lane. I appreciate it because I just love uh, hearing those old names. You know, w growing up in the 50s, we saw all these actors in their later years. Yeah. Uh, or we saw them, you know, on old movies on TV. Right? Yeah. That yeah. kind of thing. My mother's favorite, by the way, was Robert Taylor. <laughs> so mm. there you go. <laughs> she loved yeah, Robert yeah. Taylor. He, he, he was I I can't do that. Ivan right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And if you and, and, and I and I would be remiss if I didn't mention the Fox stars, Henry Fonda. And Tyrone Power, they were the kings of their lot too. So yeah. And by the way, so I just want to say, in the 21st century, our famous leading man is Manny Pacheco. He <laughs> he's at the very top of the all list. <laughs> I can't take this anymore. I just can't. <laughs> <laughs> Manny, Thanks. appreciate it. Thank you so much. You got it. You got it. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.